Hi, Year 3. This is your computing lesson this week. Um, it's lovely to see you all again. I uh, hope you had a lovely half term. Though I know that seems like a long time ago now because we're already on Thursday. Um, there was great news yesterday from the Prime Minister that hopefully we'll get to see you very soon in a few weeks' time, which we're all really looking forward to. So I'm going to go through computing lesson today. Now, a few parts of the lesson, I'm going to go to show you a few videos that are on the internet. So what I need you to do is just be really patient with me because I'm going to share my screen and flip between the two things. So I will try my best to do it as efficiently as I can. So today's computing lesson and what, are, what we're going to be looking at for in computing going forward is animation. And it's quite exciting because we've timed this really well that when by the time you come in, We'll be able to start making our own animations in school i'm going to show you some ways of how um, creators are able to make things look like they're moving and how they manage to make their animations today we're going to understand what stop animation is and you might recognize some of the characters in the pictures down here um, this is from wallace and gromit so wallace and gromit um, is an animation they're made out of the plasticine um, as is a lot of the things in the background and you can see this person here this man here is moving part of um, the character's head and I'll show you in a minute what they do, but they move every and they have to take a photo for every single time they move it and they create, they put it together and that creates the animation. I'm going to go through a few examples with you. So animation. So here's another example of a, of a plasticine or uh, sort of a bit like Play-Doh um, model is Chicken Run. They do the same thing and it's made by the same people. So animation is the process creating the illusion of moving images using a series of still frames. I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to have a think of what an illusion is. What is an illusion? Okay, so an illusion is when there's something that makes it look like it's doing something and it's not. Um, you can um, look up online um, some different illusions and see there's lots of different ones um, I can think of. And it looks like things are moving or it looks like something's there and it's not really there. So this um, animation they make it look like the characters in the program or the film are moving, um, but actually what they do is they um, move them slightly, take a photo or a frame, and then they put all the frames or the photos together and it looks like they are moving. I will show you some examples. So the idea all started in New York City in the year 1888. And an inventor, Thomas Edison, and his assistant, William Dixon, were worried others were catching up with the growing trend of camera development. So they both created a device which recorded moving images. In 1890, Dixon presented the kinetograph, a basic motion picture camera, and this is what it looked like. So this is what it is, and this was uh, back in 1890. That's what they created to start off. So the technology that we have now is uh, far more advanced than what they had then. This is how they started it off. Before animation was widely understood, there were many inventions and devices that fascinated people by seeming to merge images or make them appear to move. Some of them have complicated sounding names, just like the one on the previous side. slide. Before this, there were other devices that people used to create their moving pictures. Now I've looked up so the, how to pronounce some of these names because some of them are a bit tricky. So this one, I want to say it slowly, is a phenakistoscope. Phenakistoscope. I did look it up to find, check that I was pronouncing it correctly. This one is either a flip book, which is nice and easy to say, or a kineograph. Then we've got a zoetrope, which we looked at when we looked at the uh, Victorian schools, and a thaumatrope. So these are four different ways of how they used to make it look like things were moving when they weren't. And I'm going to go look at those in a little bit more detail for you now. So we're back to the tricky words. Phenakistoscope was invented in 1832 and uses a spinning disc attached vertically to a handle. So it had a spinning disc and on the disc, I don't know if you can see, if I make it a little bit bigger, each image was slightly different. And what it meant was that as it span, it made it look like the picture was moving. I'm going to show you an example, not of this type, but one that's very similar, where it's just a photo, but if it moves really quickly, it does look like it's moving. The kineograph or the flip book was created in 1886. And I'm going to show you a video now. And what it is, is a little book. And on each page is a different image. And as the person flicks through the pages, the images look like they're moving. But actually, each page is just a separate one. So I'm going to share my screen. And like I said, just be really patient with me because I'm going to have to share it with you. 
find the right one. OK, so this, I'm really hoping you can see this clearly. So this looks like it's moving, but actually each page has got a different picture on. I'm going to play it again for you. And you can see the thumb just here is flicking through the pages quickly and each page has a different picture on it. And as they flick through, it looks like the heart is flying out of the hat, but actually they're just separate pictures. It's very, very clever. So that's one of the flip book examples. OK, I'm going to play it one more time for you to see. That's very clever how it does it. So it looks like, again, it looks like it's animated, but actually it's just each page has got a separate thing. OK, I'm going to share my other screen with you now. Thank you for being so patient with me. OK, so that is a kineograph or a flip book. And like we just saw there, so there's a book that he's got and he's flicking through it and each page has got a different image on it. A zoetrope is what they looked at uh, when they had the Victorian school do a recount in English. This was invented in 1834 and uses a rotating drum with slits in it to view the images as they spin around. So you, I'll show you in a moment. But what they put is they put a little card um, and they curl it around and they've got a picture on it. And like I said earlier, each picture is slightly different. So here, if I make this larger for you, you can see there's a horse and then above it, it's possibly like a lion or something. I'm not sure, but the lion or whatever is above it, is moving further forward. So if you see by this stage, it's already nearly at the horse. So whilst it's moving, you look in the little slits here on the zoetrope, and you'll be able to see it, and it will look like the animal on the top is jumping down. It moves, and I'm going to show you another example. Again, I'm going to try to share my screen with you. Is this going to work? Here we go. Okay, so this is the um the tape and you can see this one's got a girl and she's skipping there are other ones you'll see an example of as well so what she does is they curl uh they curl it round and they put it inside the zoetrope there and you can see the slits and that's what you would look in to see it animated and then as you spin it if you look inside you can see and it looks like this girl is skipping but actually each picture is just different and it's skipping that one looks like they're moving they're swapping heads over there's lots of different ones you can do this is another way that looks like it's animated, but actually they are um, pictures. There you go, there's a seal diving in the water or a dolphin of some sort, ball going through hoops. So there's lots and lots of different ones there for you. I'm going to stop sharing and share my other screen again. And then a thaumatrope provides an illusion of motion with the two sides of the disc each depicting a different phase of the motion. But there's no examples are known to have been produced until long after the introduction of the first widespread animation device. So this one looks like this. I'll show you an example in a moment. So um, they have two discs of it and they have a picture on both sides. And this is a, a really easy one to make. And I think we'll probably make one of these in school. And you are very welcome to make one at home as well if you're able to. So what they do is they have a picture on both sides and then you spin it really quickly and it looks like the pictures are linked together, but they're not. So this is what it looks like here. I'll show you a little picture in a moment. Um, and it's a really easy thing to make as well, this one. So let me have a look. Try again. Um, here we go. So this is a cage on one side and a bird on the other and they've got a piece of string that's gone through the holes and they spin it with their fingers and then look what happens. It looks like, it looks like if you look carefully, it looks like the bird is in the cage. So you can see that they're separate pictures, but if they spin it really quickly, it looks like they are actually spinning it um, and it looks like it's in the cage. Okay. Ooh, lots of sharing of screens today. OK, how does animation filmmaking work? Animation is the rapid display of pictures which gives the illusion of movement. Each picture is called a frame. So it, instead of like a photo, although they do take photos, they call those frames. The animation is usually played at a rate of 16 to 25 frames per second. So that's saying, if you imagine a film like Chicken Run or Wallace and Gromit, every second of that film they have to move 
the plasticine, the Play-Doh, the characters or something, it, one second of it is 16 or, or up, to, up to 25 different frames, different photographs cr to create it. So you can understand it must take them years and years to make these films. Now, there's a little YouTube video now I'm going to show you that shows it looking at some of these characters and how they how they take the photos and some of the technology that they use. Now the woman um, showing you it, uh, she works for the, one of the companies in America, uh, but I'm going to show you now just one of the videos just so you can have a little look, look at it. I'm going to try and make sure that you can hear my sound as well. Okay, I have shared my sound with you, so I'm really hoping you can hear this. Um, if not, uh, I'll make sure I attach it later on for you to hear. So this is just, um, it's going to be about two minutes, this video. I'll make it large for you as well. Somewhere deep inside of these bones, an emptiness began. Stop motion, sometimes called stop frame, is an animation technique that's existed for over 100 years. Filmmakers realized early on that they could create amazing illusions by stopping and starting their cameras. Objects, clay, puppets, and even people can be animated. The principles are always the same. Place something in front of a camera and take a picture. Move it slightly and take another picture. Do this a bunch more times. When you string so there, what they've done is they've got taken a photo of a coin and they've just moved the coin slightly and taken some more photos, um, some more frames, what they call them. Bring these images together, the object appears to move. Typically, 12 frames create one second of stop motion animation. By varying the amount you change the object between frames, you can make it appear to move slower or faster. This is the most basic principle of animation. Puppets are a little more complicated to animate because they have so many moving parts. A puppet must be flexible but able to hold any pose for an extended period of time. Inside is a strong skeleton made of aluminum wire or specially engineered joints. This is called an armature. Even a puppet's clothing usually has wire in it so it can hold gravity-defying poses. Most puppets can't stand by themselves. They must be screwed to the set or supported by a rig that is digitally erased later. Some puppets are built with mouths that can open. But many aren't. To get the fullest range of mouth and facial expression, replacement parts are often used instead. This can be as simple as using stickers for the mouths, or as complicated as swapping the entire head with a new one. That's how Jack was able to sing and change emotion in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Recent films like Paranorman and The Box Trolls have utilized 3D printing to create thousands of replacement parts. In fact, a lot of technology is used to aid in production such as digital SLR cameras and software like DragonFrame. This software allows an animator to capture images directly to a computer and play their animation back instantly. This so I'm hoping that helps you understand and see how they do it. And I think it'll also make you realize when you next watch a film like Box Trolls or Chicken Run, it'll make you realize how much work goes into making these things. Let me stop sharing this with you and go back to my screen. Um, it's, it's very impressive how they do it and how long it takes. You have to be so creative, especially if you saw they were modeling that person, that little character's mouth. Um, it's just, yeah, it's very, very impressive how they do it. So your task today is to choose one of the devices which have uh, been used for stop animation. So one of the ones that I've gone through with you, and I want you to research it. So looking at, so it could be the uh, kinetograph, could be the zoetrope. I want you to do a bit of research on one of the ways that they used to animate and I like to look up some information on that chosen one, how it's used and what it does. And then you can either present your research by writing about it. So you could draw a picture of it at the top and write about it, or you can record yourself talking about it, um, either as a video if you're able to, or as a um, recording of your voice. And you could put that onto tapestry so that we can have a look. Um, this is meant to be really fun topics. I know at the moment we're just having a bit of research time, but when we're back in, we'll be able to um, actually start looking at different ways that we could animate and we'll hopefully we'll be able to make some of those things um, to, to show stop animation as well. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a video that I saw when I, not when I was teaching, but I saw it recently and I thought it was really impressive and it's a type of animation and it's made, um, it is an animation and it's made completely out of chocolate. So my last thing is how I'm going to end my lesson today. If only I could end every lesson on chocolate. So I'm going to share my screen for the last time. I'll close that one down. And this is my last thing I'm going to show you. 
this animation is completely made out of chocolate. And you can see it goes a bit fuzzy and that's because something is spinning around it, um, a bit like the Zoe trope, and it's animated. And this is all made out of chocolate and now that's spinning. So it looks like it's moving and it's made. That's it when it's stopped. So you can see it's not actually moving. It's all stopped, but everything is at different stages. So you can see the eggs are all jumping around and you've got birds here that are made out of chocolate and it's all animated so that when it spins properly, if you wait a moment, you'll see, and then they add some lights to it. It looks like the birds are diving in. It looks like the buckets are filling up and the chocolate's pouring down. I just think that's very, very impressive. That's just something I saw as well. So when you're doing some research, you might see some of those. Make sure though, like we've already said when we discussed e-safety before, you're always speaking to your um, parents to make sure they know what you're looking at um, and just stay safe on there. I'll show you this one more time and then I will stop the video for you. But I really look forward to hearing and seeing what your research you're doing on your animations. I know this is very cool, so you're probably not even listening to the end of this, but um, make sure you put on tapestry and we will either watch or listen to what you've got to say or we'll see your, your um, design and what you've learnt in your facts that you've written down. If you're writing facts, you can just put them as bullet points. It's absolutely fine. OK, it was lovely to see you again and we'll hopefully see you in a few weeks time. Fingers crossed. Bye, Year 3.